Hello everyone and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Shonen Archive. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching the entire anime history that's available in English of Shonen Jump that we can find for ourselves, starting with Gintama, which is what we're finally getting back to today, but also dabbling in a bunch of other things like Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which we need to finish, and Chainsaw Man, which we need to finish. <laughs> <laughs> And we're here for the new year. We had to take a, a break because both me and Zen got really busy and were not able to record. And also we had a little bit of an issue in that uh, the Skin Tom episode, which we're about to start on here. Uh, unfortunately, we stopped at the worst point possible. <laughs> Sucks. It's so much. Yeah. Let me, we'll give a preset here. Me and Zen both really have been enjoying watching Gintama. But this episode, which followed up. Perhaps one of the best arcs that we've seen in Gintama so far, which was the Mitsuba Okita sister arc. Fucking fantastic. No denying on that. Perfect peak. And the fact that this episode, which unfortunately Zen watched before I did, I did not see it right after seeing the the, the previous arc. It really <laughs> was not a good time to start up Gintama where we had to talk about this episode. So we couldn't do the basic thing of like um, doing two episodes like we did the previous one. Because it would literally be literally just be nothing but us kind of crapping on Gintama. Yeah, it'd be a whole episode of us just shitting on the worst Gintama episode of all time. Yeah, and we just didn't want to do that. So we waited. And finally, we have enough time where we can do a decent chunk of three episodes, which I think is a fair enough block to say. If these three end up all being sneakers and we don't like it, then hey, we literally gave it three episodes try. But I will preface this with saying the last arc previous was amazing. Absolutely um, <laughs> some of the best yes, of the, really of the series that we've seen. So go kind of have that headspace as we talk about these episodes. But it's a new year, Zen. We're gonna. I think this is the year we're gonna finish Gintama in the year twenty twenty three. What do you think? Twenty twenty three. Yeah, I could. S- How many episodes are there? Three hundred. <laughs> no oh, god. Okay, <laughs> so let's see. Doing the math right now. Three hundred, and then we have to count all the other side stuff. So I think it would literally take the rest of the year. <laughs> Yeah, so if we did five episodes a week, uh, it would take us 43 weeks. Hmm. We'll figure it out. We'll, either way, <laughs> we're, we're going to get for a <laughs> decent chunk of it. I can guarantee you that. There's there's 52 weeks in a year, so we could make it. We're going to try our damnedest. <laughs> and then we also obviously have to talk about the, the movie, because I think Gintama actually ends with a movie, and so we do have to eventually pick up on those other two as well. But we'll get there. But we're going to start here with episode 88, which the title of it is, The Most Exciting Part of a Group Date is Before It Starts. Um, And that is, I believe, also the name of the Crunchyroll title. So we're all good here. So, okay. So here's how we're going to start this one. Okay, strap yourselves in on this one. Uh, Tojo, who is the dude who's super obsessed with QB, or the guy who's supposed to be uh, protecting her. I forget exactly. He's the guy with no eyes. He's the guy from the shit game. He's the guy from the shit fight where he uh, wiped his ass with the picture of Quebec. Yes, so you know that he's super dedicated to his master and uh, her growth. He makes a lot of references about trying to... He's writing in a diary at the beginning, and he's writing down about like how he's trying to focus on QB's growth and he keeps putting up these gothic lolita costumes which she automatically just blows up with a bazooka and then he also keeps going back to loft which is something that he keeps on doing throughout the entire episode is that he keeps going back to this loft store um and the reveal is is that if he whoever is reading this diary then he has died and he need they need to continue on his journey because he's noticed that QB is possibly looking into maybe changing genders i that's not what he says in there but basically he says i'm dead i need you to continue on with specifically making sure that qb stays a girl uh and then it's revealed he's not dead obviously and that he just decided to leave this note for the gintoki's crew he finally talks to them for realsy i don't know why he did the whole diary thing other than to force them to try and (laughs) carry on this very stupid thing that he's got going on uh, he's very worried. He says that I don't think she can be happy if all she's doing is chasing women, which is bullshit. <laughs> it's just a straight straight up some horse shit from 2008. But either way, let's continue on. 
Uh, they say he found something in QB's room, which might suggest that she is going to be going for a gender reconstruction. And they handle this in the best way possible by showing a giant penis that is completely structured, and they call it the Tower of Babylon. And they're going to be the Babylon Warriors. And basically, this entire episode is them making a group date to prevent her from changing gender, to make her understand gender roles, uh, to stay as a woman. That is the premise of this episode. Let uh-huh. me just before we go on and <laughs> get to the episode is is transphobia and misogyny. It is extremely. I will say right now, if they did not fucking include this part of it, this would have been perfectly fine. It would have been just a thing to make fun of group dates, which is what they probably should have just done. But the fact that this beginning part of it is so focused on this, it makes it really hard to enjoy the rest of it because it's just the ulterior motives of the characters of trying to potentially force someone to stop transitioning themselves which just doesn't feel right in the year 2023 and it's the worst way about it too because it's not just like oh well i say not just like this isn't already awful but it's not just like oh we have to stop this person from from transitioning it's oh, we have to stop this woman from transitioning into a man by reminding her of her place as a woman. (laughs) And then also making her fall in love with a man. Yeah, they're literally like, oh, she's, she's like, gender confused and she might think that she might be trans um have you tried dicking her down is basically <laughs> what they're saying it's, it's really so bad it's really bad it's really bad and the worst part is that it's really coming at you at two points because it's like well why don't you just focus on the fact that it could very easily just be a girl girl and she could live happily as a w- no even if she were to become a man that's still not right okay never mind there's so much going wrong with this premise here at the beginning and it never really slows down it just remains terrible <laughs> yes the entire time it, it really does but let me continue on from here so they decide to just put up a group date they start they decide to start go looking for stuff uh kintoki starts asking the regulars that you would expect all the males uh he asks katsura to help him but katsura says i'm a samurai do you think i would degrade myself by doing something like a group date and then he immediately goes on to be like a barker for a hostess club <laughs> immediately yes. after saying it um, he's still the best character in the show. He's really good. It, the outfit that he wears in here almost made me want to really like this episode, but unfortunately, it was not enough to save it. Uh, him and his Katsu rap were not you know enough. It's a bad episode when Katsura can't save it. I know it's so sad. It makes me so sad to say. Anyway, they go. He visits a lot of the other male characters that you know. We get a cameo from the alien who is very nice, who looks completely mean. We get the old man as well. Uh, Tay is asked to kind of. Uh, I think Shinpachi asked Tay and QB basically to hey, participate in the group date. And Tay says, this is fantastic. This is a great way for women to dine and dash if they just go on a, uh, on a group date. They don't have to worry about anything else. They don't have to pay for anything. And then he goes like, can you please just not be so for- for- forefront about what <laughs> what most women use group <laughs> dates for? Please? <laughs> uh, so they said, yeah, of course. We'll, we'll go. It'll be fine. And we'll get some good food out of it and stuff and i'll bring other women and he's basically asking can you please bring some more cute women uh the dude taijo he just goes around visiting a bunch of brothels <laughs> they beat him up saying like you didn't do shit <laughs> all you did was visit very shady places that didn't actually find anyone okay so they decide this is the group date going to be starting taijo is going to have to take a step back because if he's there he's automatically going to tell qb what's going on um so they start, the people meeting up for the group date start meeting up at that giant statue, which is the exact same statue where uh, Katsura and um, shit, Kondo met up, the, the one where they decided to make <laughs> peace after friending each other on the internet. I think it's the exact same place. Oh, you're right, it is. <laughs> it's exa- that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh, it's the- <laughs> I remember this place. <laughs> Which is really funny because Katsura and Kondo end up beating each other here again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, everyone starts to come in. Uh, Katsura shows up and he shows up in a like, similar to the Piccolo outfit from the uh, car episode in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Except yes, for, it's like the, but it says Zura on this yeah, the, the it sweatshirt. Says, it says Zura on the sweatshirt and he has like a Z on his hat and i could have swore the z kind of remind me of the z and dragon ball z but maybe it's just a z but i assume it's a reference to that he immediately starts rapping saying like he needs to get pe- he also gets angry at elizabeth because elizabeth is not actually following 
uh, he, she's not, he's not singing the chorus, so he's like, oh yeah, he, now hit it up with the chorus, and then he's just, like, using the signs to sing the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> which I thought was really funny, but then they tell him, like... To, I, I know we've already said many times this episode is terrible, but to put in perspective how bad it is, Katsura raps for a significant portion of the runtime of this episode. He does. And it's still the worst episode in the series. It is. <laughs> the, the Katsura rap is not enough to save it. Which is lines I thought I'd never say. <laughs> the Katsura rap is not enough to save it. No, just so sad to say. But anyway, he ends up revealing that he's not there. He's just there recruiting for the anti foreigners by going around doing a rap. Uh, that's when they reveal that Kondo, because Kondo ended up being at the place where, because uh, he's obviously always talking Tay. So Kondo and, um, I cannot believe I'm forgetting the ninja girl's name right now. She's, ah, uh, shit. What is, what is the name of the stalker ninja? Please, Sai. Then. Say it again? Sai, right? S-A-E? Sai, okay? yes. Sai. So both Sai and Kondo yeah. are coming to the group meeting place at the exact same time because both of them were stalking at Tay's place no, at the it's exact same time. That is not all her name. It's, uh, it's, uh, Sachan. Sachan, there you go. Oh, fuck. It's been a very long time. Forgive me. But, uh, yeah, so Sachan and them are having an argument about stalking and going to go to there. Uh, Kondo is dressed up with sle- a sleeveless shirt and Sachan is there in a bright outfit. <laughs> My favorite dynamic for... Because Sachan kind of annoys me most of the time. Mm-hmm. But her dynamic with Kondo is so fucking funny. It is. <laughs> it's I'm very... just like, uh-uh, you're the stalker. I'm normal. <laughs> it's, like... <laughs> it's really good because she re- she's really putting it on heavy, showing up in a <laughs> bright outfit of all things. Um... When he gets there, Gintoki immediately takes down Kondo, saying, what the hell are you wearing? Like, you're just wearing a sleeveless shirt. Are you supposed to be hot or cool? <laughs> the jacket, because your jacket has no sleeves. Are you supposed to be hot? Are you cold? I can't understand your dynamic. <laughs> uh, then Sachan says, "What? Uh, how come you're ignoring me? What about my outfit? And then he does a very rare thing where he just says, like, oh, you're, you're very cute, actually. He just <laughs> treats her very normally. Yeah, he actually compliments her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Katsura goes to co- help up Kondo, and then they meet, and then they immediately go like, oh shit, this is a problem, they're looking for each other, it's okay. QB shows up on a horse, and immediately beats the shit out of both of them with the horse, and says, I was told that this is a battlefield, so I came prepared, so she came pre- dressed up like as a general for war <laughs> to go on this group date. Um, which is good, because the horse ends up knocking them both out, and we learn later that they both have amnesia, so they don't know who they are. Um, during the group date. It's really date. funny to me that amnesia is like a running joke in <laughs> it, in Kintama. It is. And it's especially funny with Zura because Katsura will be like, I don't know what my who I am or what my name is, and he does perfectly the, the Katsura rap <laughs> without ever trying to figure out the idea. He literally <laughs> has his name on his fucking shirt, and he cannot remember what his name is. <laughs> um, good. Yep, good. And now we're finally almost at the group date. Tay shows up with a bunch of uh, ugly women is the nicest way I can say it. <laughs> These are, uh, they call them battle-hardened soldier zombie warriors. <laughs> These are women here only. <laughs> they are experts at the group date. They are here to eat the food. And then Toki says, she's so smart. You never invite someone that's cuter than you are. <laughs> <laughs> So then we finally get into the group date. Everyone, there's a divide between the men and the women because uh, nobody wants to start. No one on the men's side, there's only five men and then there's only a bunch of women. No one on the men's side wants to organize it because they make the statement that if a man starts to organize the group date, he basically knocks himself out of the running of ever being able to participate in the group date. So nobody wants to do it, but they know because they know if they start doing it, then that means they're not going to be able to be with any of the women. Um, it ends up being not a problem because Katsura and, uh, uh, Kondo end up bonding with each other because they both have amnesia and they make it really funny because it's like, even though I've never met you, I feel like I know you. I feel like this was destined to be, I feel like we're always, like, I feel like we're connected in some way. Um, which is really funny. And because of them starting to talk to each other, the women start talking to each other and they see a giant divide between each other. Um, and probably one is, I took it as a very funny, but very, very bad set of foreshadowing, um, 
QB is uninterested in her mushrooms because the shape looks weird to her. <laughs> so they take this as an opportunity for Gintoki to say, I'll take those mushrooms. And then this is when uh, they start having like a weird like high school setting to everything. Um, it ends up being that they keep trying to make the divide ha- happen because, again, the ultimate goal here is for QB to not want to transition and to love men. Uh, a bunch of stuff ends up happening. There's a divide between the men and the women. It's uh, a bunch of silly stuff happens, but then Katsura and uh, Kondo end up deciding that obviously we want to unite Japan together for the for through rap and rock, and so they start singing a song, uh, which drives uh, QB and Shinpachi to tears for some reason. <laughs> like they start crying. I don't know why. Um, the they end up finding each other and then what happens is that the guy from the beginning tonjo decides that if nothing's gonna happen that he has to basically like destroy he has to basically take him he hijacks the ship and his motive is to cause a scene where no matter what people will fall in love because they will be in great peril uh qb ends up being like almost thrown off the boat completely it basically ends up working so gintoki goes to save her knowing that if she he touches her she feels weird about being touched by men so she would automatically toss him off the boat um he he saves her she tosses him off the boat and then as she's really having a realization of like oh man what the hell am i doing i'm literally killing the person who's come to save me she grabs his hand and then it's all good uh, she basically is able to go get over her disdain for touching men. And the final scene basically reveals that QB was not looking at to having a sex change, but she was actually looking at the bottom gothic Lolita costume, which is what he had been showing her throughout the entire episode, and she was actually interested in it. So there we go. A situation solved, and we get a new ED, which is all about um, Elizabeth. <laughs> the Elizabeth ED riding on a motorcycle. <laughs> and that's how <laughs> we thankfully end this episode ah man okay uh zen i'm gonna just say because it's been a while since you read it so i'll just say some of the things i actually end up liking because there's very there is some stuff to like about it even though the overall episode is not good is not something i actually enjoyed but there were some stuff obviously all the stuff with uh katsura was funny uh, not enough to save the episode, but it is funny. No, I li- no. nothing saves the episode. Nothing saves the but episode, but I, I do like some specific jokes of that stuff right there. Um, the part with him and Kondo fighting, and then obviously him fighting with Kondo fighting with Sachan, I thought was funny too. There is a brief moment in the weird fantasy that they've created for themselves where they they're like going like, oh yeah, uh, Gintoki is like the evil boss, but then it turns out oh no, Tay is the class president, and then the ugly girls end up being the uh, the hecklers, and then it's revealed that Sachan's actually the librarian who has a crush on the boss. It's like he goes so crazy off of where it goes, and when she when Sachan falls, she starts bleeding out of her eye, which I thought was funny. <laughs> thought it was a good little weird thing to have there um and yeah i think that it, i like them that, that they were meeting back up at that place where it reminded me of the uh the 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 internet episode which was really funny um and that's basically it in terms of negatives there's too many to really count here the overall premise again i think this episode would have been fine if he had literally just cut that beginning premise off it's just like too much it's like too much negativity that it yeah, ma- if it was just like an episode that was like, oh, aren't group dates stupid and silly? Then it'd be like, okay. You know, yeah, I it, if, that. Yes, if <laughs> the ep- why did you have to make it like the misogyny, transphobia stuff? Yes, like I know it, it's from the 2000s, but like this is a lot. Yes, it's too much. It's, and it's, it's a lot. Because a-, a few times now we've been like, you know, it's the 2000s. You gotta, you gotta give a little. But this is like a shitload. It's too much. And especially in a series that I feel like up to now, we never had that problem. Where it was like, oh, it's 2008, but it's actually kind of progressive in the things that they're doing. And it's not like what you would expect from a 2008 comedy, where this shit would have been rampant of it. I expect better from Gintama in this specific instance, but... Like, obviously, the dick jokes are, first of all, not funny. (laughs) I I even I have someone who's really a big fan of dick jokes. I didn't really find any of the dick jokes very funny, even them calling it. Though, though actually, there was one dick joke that I kind of liked. It was when they were doing like a commercial break and they came back, 
and they <laughs> they kept calling him. They kept saying parentheses. We're talking about a penis and parentheses. <laughs> like they kept saying that. I thought that was funny because they were just like, "This is what this very stupid episode is about." But I thought it would have been way better if it was just QB of her own accord saying, "I don't like that. I feel." weird touching dudes and if it was a way to be like well what if we go on a group date maybe that'll help if you have more knowing of men and stuff like that like if that was the premise i'd be fine with it but otherwise it feels like a bunch of characters forcing qb to be a specific way of what qb is and i feel like especially with the introduction that they had with uh with them it feels like a step back it feels like a just like a misplay just feels like a yeah it's weird because like uh, it was relatively like tasteful when she first appeared, yeah, yeah. Uh, and now it's like really bad, and I don't, I don't yeah. know. And I, and I've been told by some people who have said forward that they do more justice in the future, but for this one, it's I really do hope in the future they do better with it because for this one, it just just didn't feel right, especially because this is a character that I actually like, and I like the way that they handled it in the debut of it, and it, I feel like they did a very nuanced character that was tough to put kind of like put into a specific box and this literally feels like them trying to shove them into a box because yeah, as hard as they possibly can yes and you know but yeah that's how i end up feeling about this one how do you feel i remember you this you can finally say what you want it's been a very long time since you've seen this episode but anything that you have to say feel yeah, free to no, say it's here. ass it's it's if you remember that one episode that i hated about like the pet contest mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. uh that one is like a million times better than this episode it's <laughs> fucking terrible um it it's so much cringe 2008 like anti-humor um it's oh my god yeah it's it, i can't even like per, like fully articulate exactly how ass this episode is it it is so unbelievably ass in almost every way uh, like, and it's kind of like you said, where if, if the entire framing of the episode was not there, and it was just the content, it would be like okay, yeah. Because you know, like it's funny. When it, it's a, it's a come down up from, and they're like, oh, yeah. love is like a battlefield, so I'm fucking in armor and I'm riding a horse. It's like yeah. okay, that's kind of funny. And then, and like uh, when Katsura and um, Kondo get amnesia and they're playing the rock and the rap at the same time, and they're like <laughs> arguing about it. And it somehow it like makes QB cry because it's like that good. Like <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, this is the thing. The actual framing of the episode is so awful. Yeah, it's just so bad that it enjoys it. It saps a lot of the fun, which is a shame because I really do feel like the previous episode, the previous episode of uh, Kintama was just so emotional that they just wanted something where you could just kind of, you know, just laugh because of how fucking emotionally draining the last one is. I just feel like. It was a misstep of what they were trying to do. I understand where they were, tr- what they were trying to do, but it still feels like a misstep, even if given the yeah, era. I'm, and the I'm not opposed to like funny filler stuff, mm-hmm. like that's fine. But boy, <laughs> you you really went too far into like the cringe misogyny, yeah. transphobia humor. Yes, and I'll say again, I'm per- <laughs> there's some misogyny that's funny, but there is a balance in how you do no, it. No, there is some that's funny, but it's not. Do you think that she wouldn't be gay or trans if she got uh, sexed good? Like that's no. not the good. No, the now it's, that kind of humor can be going, funny. Yeah, it's exactly. Not, when he's like this, a, a bunch of women showing up just to get free food and prey on men. That's funny to me. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Like, that's funny. That's and her great. being so upfront about it. Like, oh yeah, this this is awesome because we all just get to get to eat for free for nothing. Hell yeah, like, that's, that's great. Funny. <laughs> that's funny, but. Uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate, and I really do hope, I'm going to side with the people who have seen all Gintama, that later on, that they do do justice with <clears throat> the idea of QB and a little bit more of their gender and stuff like that. I'll believe them for the most part, but for this specific episode, Yeah, just... well, I mean, again, you know it's telling, because, like, we have some people who follow this show, like... I'm not saying it's, like, a huge show or anything, but I'm just saying, no. like, we have some people that follow the show specifically for the purposes of, like, we want to see what you guys think about Kintama. Yeah. And even those people were like, oh, God, it's this episode? Yeah, that's not a good sign. <laughs> no, it's not a good sign at all. Very bad sign, but I also believe those same people who tell us, like, um, don't worry, something, something 
not 100% simple. This but done right is coming eventually in the future, and I'm interested to see that. But for this part, episode 88, big thumbs down. Probably the worst... Uh, whenever, probably the worst episode we've seen for, uh, easily, Shoei in my Manga. opinion, the worst yeah. Tom episode that I've seen. Yeah, for easily friggin' Tom, I will say, yeah, easily. So that's episode 88. Hopefully, if you're watching the start of the show from here, just go watch the previous Gintama <laughs> Shonen Archive where we talked really good about Gintama. <clears throat> Let's move on, though, Zen. It's time to finally move on. We're in 2023. It is time for us to move past episode 88 and talk about episode. Specter of episode 88 that killed the show for two months. <laughs> Almost. We were really avoiding it. I really did not want to talk about talk bad about Gintama, which kind of shows how much we've grown to like the show. Yeah, well, Gintama's like a good show, and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of good to be had in there, so it sucks to have a whole episode after you're like, this shit's yeah, fucking well, awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> it feels bad. <laughs> Makes me feel wrong. Anyway, episode 89, what happens twice? happens thrice which is aka this is the bleach episode <laughs> so good yes you're gonna have to explain to me what happens here but this is a two-part episode um <clears throat> not with different names they're basically the same premise which the premise is uh man we really do like bleach here don't we <laughs> <laughs> uh part a is focused on kentucky's group and part b is focused on the shinsen gumi so part a uh, they wake up in this, like, black area. There's, like, no background. There's no nothing uh, with both Shinpachi and Kentucky there. They're really confused about what's going on here. And then finally a voice reveals to them that he is the spirit of Gintoki's sword, Lake. What is the name of his sword? It's, like, Lake Ta- Taka or something? Because he has, like, uh, a... Lake ha- Toya. Lake Toya. He has, like, the marking on his head that says Lake Toya. <laughs> um... He's basically there to say, like, we need to unlock your full power, and Kentucky says, nah, I'm okay. And he goes, are you sure? Because we're, like, in, like, the second season of your anime, and this would be a really good time to have, like, a special move. And he goes, nah, nah, don't really care. So they all basically go back asleep um, while he's explaining to them, like, it'd be really good if you actually had the special ability, and actually, I'm going to trap you here forever, um... They fall asleep while he's talking about trapping them there forever, and then he says, I'm going to kick you in the shins if you do not wake up. I'm giving you till the count of three. I'm changing it to five, actually, because he counts down to three, and then he goes, like, I'm changing it to five. I'm being very nice right now. This wakes up both Kagura and Gintoki, who then kick him in the shin uh, <laughs> at the same time. Um, <clears throat> then he ends up getting mad at them. He's like, fine, I don't want to teach you this stupid move, but you're trapped here forever. And then this is when they start to just start raiding his room. They were in a, like a black nothing, and then all of a sudden there's like a fridge. Kentucky opens the fridge and he like starts making talking shit on his food, saying it's expired. Uh, Chimpachi starts to clean around the house. He finds his like uh, porn mags under his bed, and then he basically says like, "All right, fine. I don't want you guys here anymore. You guys can leave." And they said, "I thought we were stuck here forever." I changed my mind. Get the hell out of here. And he opens up the door, and his mom shows up, and his mom beats him up, saying, like, you can't be treating your friends. This is why you have no friends, because you treat them like this. You come up into the room, and then you say, no, you have to leave. Uh, and then the mom and the son start having a fight with each other, and the mom pleads to the Kentucky's group, can you please just, like, learn the ultimate move? He's like, he has a very hard time <laughs> finding friends because his dad's constantly moving around. Can you please just learn the ultimate move? And they all go, like, we want to learn the ultimate move. And then the, the sword goes, I don't want to teach you the ultimate move anymore. <laughs> and then he starts, he's crying to himself because he doesn't feel cool anymore because he got yelled at by his mom. <laughs> and then his mom goes like, oh, no, please, honey, play, play with your friends, play with your friends, do the ultimate move, show the ultimate move, hit your mom with the ultimate move. He's like, I don't want to do the ultimate move, mom, anymore. And then she finally goads him enough and he does the ultimate move. Hits him with like a like a super crazy uppercut, and when when he hits his mom with the ultimate move, Kentucky goes, ah, that's the ultimate move. <laughs> uh, just as he's hitting his mom, he starts to realize what he's done. So he goes, mom, mom, are you okay? And then his uh his dad comes home, and his dad comes home from work, and he starts to do his ultimate move, which is named after. He has, like, a specific, like, uh, celebrity name, which I can't remember at the moment. I want to say it's Bruce Willis, but he starts calling it that. 
And he's, his mom says, like, you have to get past the curse of your father. You have to beat the, your father with your ultimate move. And he goes, you're right, mom. So he starts charging up his ultimate move to counteract his father. And then Gitoki goes, like, no, don't do it. This will break apart your family. So both him and Kagura <laughs> chin kick both <laughs> his sword and his sword's dad. Um, and he kicks him in the shin. The sword goes, he acknowledges, and he says, that's your ultimate move right there. That's power. And then they they both basically... The thigh kick is your ultimate move. And they both like get angry and says, whatever. Uh, and then they just start beating up on him again. And then they're shown sleeping. And they basically... As they're, as they're sleeping and they're beating the shit out of him for them saying, like, that's your ultimate move right there. Um, the, the ultimate move that I wanted to teach you was always the thigh burst. Uh, they start beating the shit out of him. And we go back to the group where they're sleeping. And we see Gintoki's sword cracks. <laughs> and that's the end of part A. We'll talk about part A here. Zen, I had no idea what was going on <laughs> the entire time. Is this Bleach? Is this <laughs> so kind of? Um, so in Bleach, all uh, swords have like a spirit inside of them, mm -hmm. and the spirit inside of their sword is what gives shape to like the powers that they have. So the the guy was a parody of the spirit of Ichigo's sword named Zangetsu mm. uh, that, that gives him power. And whenever he gives Ichigo power, he always pulls him into like his inner world, like your, your mental world. Um, and so that's what like the black void was that turned out to be a house was uh, like supposed to be the inner world basically of, of the sword. Um, <laughs> they do teach like special techniques. Like that's how Ichigo learns most of his moves is he learns them from the spirit of Zangetsu. <laughs> um, the mother and dad stuff was not, obviously. Oh, that, 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 was, <laughs> yeah. that. Um, and then the sword cracking when they were beating up the spirit is because he was the spirit of the sword. Yeah. So when he got hurt, it damaged the blade. Perfect. Okay. And it's really funny that this episode... Because if you remember in one of the Gintama openings, he does Bankai in it. Oh yeah, that's right. He does. <laughs> he does Ichigo's bankai in one of the mm -hmm. openings. That's right. I think I remember telling a friend, "You will never find someone who loves Bleach more than the writer of Gintama," because it really feels like there's at least yeah. It... Ichigo is on the jump he's reading in that opening too. Yeah, there's just like non. I want to say at least every single time that we've talked about Gintama, there has been some form of a Bleach reference somewhere. <laughs> This one's a full-on actual parody of uh, stuff from there, too, which is great. So, yeah. Um, I ended up liking this one. I thought it was perfectly... I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I The funny thing is, is I actually thought the, the one Bleach reference I do know well uh, was the fact that there... Because a friend of mine is really into Bleach and he reads it a whole bunch. I remember the manga of Bleach has no backgrounds, right? <laughs> Sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah. So I thought that was a joke on Bleach itself, is the fact, because they complain, it's like, where the hell's the background? <laughs> <laughs> because they're in a, a void with no background, so I thought that was funny. I thought that was probably a reference to that, either intentional or not, <laughs> on the Bleach's lack of backgrounds in the manga, at least. So, that's part A. How, how'd you end up feeling about it? Because you're someone who actually really liked Bleach, this part A here with the sword Good. stuff. It was funny. I liked the Zangetsu joke. I liked him being like, you know what? I'm not even gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna teach you the thing anymore. Yeah, I really liked it how much <laughs> he was like just ch changing it up on him. But like, I don't want to teach it anymore. Oh, oh yeah. The, one of the gags here was also when they looked at his um, uh, high school yearbook. And inside of it, he had like nerd glasses instead of the cool shades that he has now. <laughs> Also, his mom has, like, his beard and his shades at the same time. <laughs> Both his yes. mom and his dad. Yeah, I like when he accidentally, like, kills his mom with the ultimate move. Yeah. And then the father comes in. <laughs> he's so devastated about what he's just seen. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, good. Now, part B. This one, I assume, some parts of it is a Bleach reference and some part of it is, of it is not. We'll find out together here. The Bleach reference in this one is mostly just that the girl looks like Rihime. <laughs> okay. So, part B, um, Soga this time, Okita. He's uh, he's the one who awakens in a white space. Hikando and Hijikata are kind of being beckoned by a woman. They're all very confused, and they decide, hey, we're going to go back to sleep. 
Uh, the woman says, please wake up. <laughs> don't, don't just go back to bed on me. Uh, she keeps pleading on them to get, uh, wake up and they finally decide to wake up and the voice shows himself to him, which ends up being a naked woman with orange hair, long orange hair. And she said, they say like, you're, and before she can say, uh, what her name is, she says, yes, I'm, there's also a really funny translator note where it says she looks exactly like Orihime from Bleach. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, you know how they explain the references in this yeah. one. They're literally like, "This is Orihime." This is <laughs> this is clearly Orihime. <laughs> Before she could say who she is, Hijikata says, "You're a pervert," and she handcuffs her and saying that you're under arrest for indecent exposure. You're too flashy. <laughs> because uh, she's built almost exactly well, not exactly like okay. I feel like um, the Orihime I know from random fan arts I've seen is a much bigger bust, but considering that this woman yes. is completely naked, <laughs> they can't probably go full, full bleach on this one. Um, but yeah, they decide that he's going to arrest her. They start immediately putting clothes on her, saying, ma'am, please, you're indecent right now. You can't really be doing this. She's like, are you really going to arrest me for this? And he's like, listen, I don't know what your story is here, but you're clearly <laughs> some kind of pervert. She's like, I'm not a pervert. I'm the goddess of victory. And then um, that's when it's revealed that Kondo says she really is. And he's been reading her diary. She's like, she's been having such a hard time. And then she starts fighting with Kondo saying, please give me back my diary. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, listen. And, he, and then Kondo basically tells her their entire life story um, about her, about being the goddess of victory. Uh, and he goes like, we're going to have to show some leniency about this specifically. She's been going for a really tough time. And then she goes, oh, wait, are you still arresting me? He's like, yes, we are still arresting you for indecent exposure. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's, as they start trying, one of the funny jokes is they go like, oh man, I'm clearly the goddess. Cause can't you see that the background is white? And then Okita goes like, I just thought the animators got kind of lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, and then finally, as we kind of go on here, they said they decide to give her a lighter sentence. They start to actually start living with her. Um, cause she says they're going to keep her. She's going to keep them in the white space forever. Um, Kondo says you have terrible luck with men. So it's fine. <laughs> he points out like I've read your diary. You have terrible luck with men. It's it, you know, this situation doesn't seem that bad for us. Uh, the goddess ends up cooking them bacon and eggs, and Hijikata goes like, I don't know what's going on. Um, Hijikata continues to make fun of her, uh, Kondo defends her, and this is where we reveal, like, oh, I guess we're playing a family now, with Kondo being the father. Uh, Hijikata, I don't remember what he ends up being, get, having his role, but then Nikita says, like, I'm the... <laughs> I'm the tough kid who's kind of going down the wrong track, and he immediately gets up and starts stealing money. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. It's like and, I'm the I'm the kid on the wrong side of the law. <laughs> and then as he's stealing her, she tries to stop him, um, and she says, "Please think about it." He goes like, "Whatever, mom." <laughs> And he's, he's super abrasive. And then at that moment, a fat and brushy haired guy shows up and shouts for Okita to stop. Uh, he declares his love for the goddess. He said he's been watching her from afar. Uh, Kondo says, I think, <laughs> I think this guy's a stalker. And um, he thinks he's the god of death, which he read about in her diary. And then the real god of death shows up. Um, he says, like, in the diary specifically, the god, the, the deaf god committed adultery and they had to break up two years ago. Um, and she still has feelings for him. And then the real god of death shows up and he says, like, um, actually, I'm the god of death. And then the other guy's like, I'm the god of poverty, <laughs> which is why he looks like so shit. Um, and then the god of death goes, like, I don't remember the part about me committing adultery, though. Uh, and then Kondo goes, like, I don't know. Maybe it was, like, a case of domestic violence. Maybe that's the thing I read. Maybe that was your case. And then another deaf god shows up and says, like, no, that was me. And that was, uh, this is the guy who's dressed up as Hollow Ichigo. <laughs> Yeah, it's in Vizard Ichigo's outfit. Yeah. Uh, and then this is when it's revealed the goddess has basically been dating a shit ton of gods in the two years. Uh, all the gods confront her at the same time. Um, and then Okita says the line, I think she's just a horrible bitch. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the goddess cries because she's lost basically everything, and now she's lonely. Uh, Okita ed- enters sadistic mode in the style of <laughs> of common writer. Uh, he manipulates the goddess and says, "Like if you lost everything, it just means you can get them back." And she's like, "You're right. I can just get them back." <laughs> And they go on like this full on war thing with the Shinsengumi, um, where she they have like super detailed paintings as her she conquests and tries to take back everything she lost. She's on a throne. And then when she's on a throne, the something happens and I guess it's because of I don't know what specifically happens, but either way, the tiny shrine that was hanging in the Shinsengumi that was probably to her cracks, falls to the ground, and Okita's uh is shown to still be asleep clearly happy with the situation of what's going on here and yeah that's the end of this one the part two not really i guess you're saying there's not actually many bleach references outside of there being ichigo and or he may here ichigo and or he may being in it, it's pretty much it yeah all right um this one's very basically this one entirely is up to how much do you just want to see a fan service version of <laughs> or a <laughs> yeah this entire episode is pretty much nothing like nothing yeah. really happens at no. all? No, no. Um, <laughs> they aren't being taught anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not even really like a running joke in it. Other than she's like, very the first bad one is like the oh, the there's the Sangetsu parody joke. This one is literally just like yeah, we're doing shit. Um, I think like, the, yeah, I guess the, this one is just like what if we just made a very bad Orihime, <laughs> which is I think like what they <laughs> wanted to make. Um. They kind of do that. I also really like that when the God of Death shows up, uh, he sounds exactly like the prince's uh, handler. <laughs> so it made me laugh a little bit. Um, oh, the guy. Yeah, I was like, oh, that sounds exactly like him, <laughs> which made me laugh. Uh, also, I liked, again, Kondo saying domestic violence and we're doing the weird house. It was a really, it's just a really weird set of shit that happens. In the last episode, this at least. The show has made the phrase domestic violence really funny to me. <laughs> Yeah, and for, a lot of it is done by the characters saying, actually, in they'll go from Japanese, and then they'll go, domestic violence. Yeah, that's the only thing that's funny about it. Yeah, <laughs> it the, is when they just go, domestic violence. And it's really funny, and I want to stress here again, me and Zen do not find domestic violence funny in any way, <laughs> but we do find Japanese people saying domestic violence funny. <laughs> um... But yeah, it ends up being... I like the ending bit where it's just like a whole dramatic thing where she's like... <laughs> where Akita basically manipulates her when he activates his fucking uh, sadistic mode. Uh, sadistic yeah, mode. Sadistic mode. <laughs> it, it, it's full-on common writer where he goes like, the, the sadistic mode change, and his like, eyes glow. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but... Yeah, another technically kind of... <laughs> if you want to stretch the word of what this considered... Uh, is a bleach parody we'll go with this one it really just feels like oh we're just here because these are both kind of sort of bleach related this character is based off of orihime so we'll we'll go from there and we'll see what happens uh and also the ichigo mask thing looks funny to me uh i don't know why he looks like really silly in that mask uh, the hollow mask does not look as that silly as ichigo's one actual one is but he has like his the the row of teeth. He's like smiling in a really funny way. So I thought that was funny. So there we go. A very simple episode. <laughs> a very one where it says like we have two technical bleach episodes. Let's put them together. And I thought it was perfectly fine. I enjoyed my time watching it. And now let's move on to the next episode, then, which is the last one we're talking about. <clears throat> episode 90 the more delicious the food the nastier it is when it goes bad oh and this one you actually watched recently so I perfect did. yeah i watched this one today yes we're back in the groove of things we start here with a uh monologue from masagawa in the style of sin city which was super big in 2008 i swear to you it really was <laughs> Um, it even has like a full on Jessica Alba in anime form. Uh, that was he's... so funny when it was just Jessica Alba, and then <laughs> like doesn't look anything like Jessica. No, Alba. does not look anything like it. She she's shaking her hips like she does in that movie. But <laughs> it, it that's the only correlation between the two. Um, he thinks that when he sees the dancer, his luck has changed, and he gets kicked out. He's as they say, like you're poor. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> Leave. Uh, yeah, he's like. 
oh, my life is finally looking up. And then, like, ten seconds later, they're like, get the fuck out. Yeah. So he's moping, <laughs> on the, he's moping in the streets. He, fi- he finds a half-eating, half-eaten Slim Jim, and he goes to pick it up. And as he's reaching for it, Elizabeth is also reaching for the half-eaten Slim Jim. Uh, neither notices an oncoming car, and they're run over. And in the back of the car, we see it was the woman... And the mysterious man who is clearly Matsudara. <laughs> it's him. But he's playing the role of the killer from Sin City. This is important because this comes back later on in the episode. <laughs> um, but yeah, Asagawa and Elizabeth both end up hospitalized at a hospital. Asagawa was basically praying to God, hey, why don't you fucking finish me off? <laughs> it's so funny when he's sitting there and he's like, clearly you hate me. I fucking hate you too. <laughs> He's like, whatever, all I could do is laugh, and he's clearly crying. <laughs> Again, I don't know why it's so funny when Hasegawa is so shit down on his luck, but it is really funny. Well, it's funny to me that he's like the only character in this entire show that has ever had consequences for his <laughs> actions, and his life is like fucking ruined. He is! He, he's like the, the scapegoat. At any time that there's a consequences for someone's actions, Hasegawa pays for it. <laughs> uh but yeah they're at the hospital uh it turned out the gintokis grew uh were hospitalized for eating rotten crabs that they were told to get rid of from uh atose and catherine uh atose and catherine talk shit to them as they leave is like i told them not to eat it it was rotten he's like they never listen and then catherine has a terrible stomach ache and atose goes okay you idiot you go to the <laughs> you go to the hospital too i know you ate the yeah. rotten crab uh, at the hospital, um, Shinpachi and Gintoki are fighting. Uh, Shinpachi says, you lied to me. You told me that food tastes the best right after it expires. <laughs> and Gintoki says, once you're over the age of 16, you're in charge of your stomach and what your choices are yours. <laughs> so they end up fighting each other and Kagura is just asking for more food. Uh, Hasegawa is immediately depressed because he's like, oh no, <laughs> I was having a nice time nursing until these guys showed up. Uh, and then the head nurse comes in and just beats the shit out of um, Gintoki's crew. And then she also beats up of Hasegawa. And Hasegawa goes, why am I getting beat up too? I didn't do anything. Um, and then we see that Osino, who is taking care of him, is the nurse. Um, as there, she's kind of taking care of him. She's talking to him. He's like, it's, always good. it's good that your friends are here. And he goes, like, these people are not my friends. <laughs> And she goes, like, they start talking about something, they start eating his get well soon bananas. <laughs> and he starts getting angry at them, he's like, leave alone, leave my bananas alone. And then we should cut to the nurse, and she's also eating his bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so she goes, like, alright. And she starts to leave, and she bonks her head, and, um... Hasegawa says, like, she's acting really weird. Uh, she's usually like that, but she's not this kind of clumsy. I think there's something up. They follow her, and they see her uh, staring in a room filled with old people. And he goes, like, there's clearly something. She's someone she loves in there. And Gintoki goes, like, really? You think that this... <laughs> no, first of all, he made a statement beforehand, which I fucking forgot, which I'm going to say right here. Uh, he says that uh, a nurse's outfit does wonders to a woman. It makes any 7 out of 10 woman a perfect 10 out of 10. <laughs> and then Kagura goes, like, oh, yeah, what do you think of me in the nurse's outfit? And then both him and Shipachi give her a 3. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't she like. Realized that means she started from zero. <laughs> yeah, she's a perfect zero. He's like, I don't like the intuition of that <laughs> where those three started from. Um, but anyway, they start looking into what she's looking at, and then he goes like, "You really think there's someone in there with? <laughs> maybe she has like a daddy thing, and maybe she's really into like older dudes." He goes like, "Oh, someone so cute like her? That's crazy." He's like, "Whatever, man. Maybe whatever daddy issues she had popped up when she looked at a bunch of old balls." It's like, "Why'd you say old balls? You could just said wrinkly that face." Was, that might have been my favorite joke in the episode when he's like, "Yeah, all these wrinkly balls are a reminder of her dad." And he's like, "Why? <laughs> Why?" <laughs> Why? You could have said anything else. You could have said wrinkly anything else and it would have been fine. <clears throat> and then we see that someone who else is in the room is Elizabeth, who was uh, injured from the car, same as uh, Hasegawa. And then inside the room is also Katsura, who is talking to Elizabeth, saying, like, you should always check for cars, Elizabeth. Uh, even if it's green, you never know <laughs> where a car could come from. 
Uh, they put two and two together and figure that she has fallen kind of in love with uh, Katsura. And they make like a noise and she gets notified and she tells them, yeah, I have some form of attraction to the person inside there. I know that we're from two different worlds and it probably wouldn't work out, but you know, I, my feelings are my feelings. Um, they feel like they have to give Katsura a chance. Uh, they have to hospitalize Katsura so that Usino has a chance to confess to him. And he says that Hasegawa says like we have to do this, we have to come together. He basically puts in his uh, he remembers like hey remember when you guys wrecked my convenience store, which is I think something that happened around fifty something episodes ago for us. A long fucking time ago, yeah. He basically calls in a debt and he says it's not right that uh, a good woman goes unhappy. And that's basically all he wants from this. Is he wants to see her happy because of how well she's treated him after he was basically sc- screaming to God to finish the job. <laughs> um they come up with this idea <laughs> which is that they're gonna hospitalize Katsura <laughs> so they dress up as like these fake doctor outfits which is them just putting on really like circly eyed glasses and putting on fake accents and it completely works on Katsura he believes him he's like we're here to do a checkup on you and he's like oh look at this brain scan we checked out your brain and then we check out this spot right here. That's the trouble period. And then he goes like, wait, you guys did a brain scan on me? He's like, yes, we just did a click, click, and then it all went perfectly. This is your brain right here. Trust me on this. Um, they say, like, this little black ink spot right here um, is the problem area. And then when he touches the black spot, uh, it becomes larger. And he goes like, oh, my God, it's it's becoming worse. <laughs> And then he starts yelling at uh, Kagura because Kagura fucked up and didn't get permanent ink. And then she's also having a weird, like, she's too far into the Doctor fantasy. And now she's saying, like, oh, don't yell at me, Doctor. Don't let everyone know that we have an affair together. It's like, would you please take this serious? (laughs) This is not, you're not doing, you're focusing on the wrong things. Um, Katsura says he ends up leaving. He's like, I'm too important. I'd like my job is too important for me to be sick with a brain thing and they say like listen man if you don't get this brain thing checked out you're going to die and he goes i'm going to die am i all right he basically falls for it completely and says i need you guys to give me whatever to make my brain better it's like well you need to be hospitalized like no i can't stay in a hospital i'm too busy just give me whatever Uh, hit me with whatever on my brain to make it better uh, it ends up being revealed that Gintoki is obviously lying to them. Uh, they end up having a big smorgasbord. They all kind of start running towards each other. They try and like beat up Katsura. Um, uh, Hasegawa ends up talking to uh, Us- Usino, and she he mentions that like you should have a chance to confess to the person you um, are in love with, even if it doesn't work out. You should try something regardless. Um, and then ends up happening is that the head nurse comes in and basically knocks the shit out of all, all the characters, except for Usino, obviously, and they all get hospitalized even longer, and Katsura gets hospitalized as well, and so they all go like, ah, yay, happy ending, um, we heard that Osino was actually able to confess, so we're happy for her, and she's gonna start dating, and then they reveal that Usino is with the person that she confessed to, and she's with the man, that she has fallen in love with, which is actually Elizabeth, and her and Elizabeth happily go off to with each other <laughs> to enjoy their happiness together. <laughs> and in a, in a callback to the beginning, it, it switches back to the Sin City style of narrating as the two nurse girls start talking about a mysterious man, and inside of it, a mysterious man asks them to have lunch with him, and it's Matsudara, so it's the same. This is literally how Sin City ends. So it's just a big reference to the way Sin City ends, which I thought was fucked up because it's like, didn't wasn't that guy a, a murder women? <laughs> it seems like a weird connection here to do at the end, but I'm sure it's not, I'm sure that neither one of them were murdered. I I assume so. And that's basically it. And then there's a little bit extra after the credits where Gintoki is now in a very shitty, <laughs> but I can. But 2008 standard CGI anime, um, he's in his, he's in the uh, apartment of where they live, and he's invisible for some reason. And he's talking to all of them like, "Oh, I'm invisible. I'm invisible. You're invisible, Kagura. What's going on here? We're all invisible." And then it's revealed that the art director forgot to turn on the characters. So the he, he clicks the little button that says like the director of photography clicks the little thing that was keeping them hidden and they become unhidden. 
And he goes like, oh, I forgot to turn on that cell. <laughs> and that's how it ends. And <laughs> I thought it was a very good little silly thing here. <laughs> but it really made me put into focus. If that's... The, I, I, I think that was an all-CGI room. I think usually the background is hand-drawn. But goddamn, has CGI really evolved from 2008? <laughs> oh. But yeah, that was this episode, Zen. How'd you feel about it? It was good. I liked it a lot. Um, I thought it was really good. I, uh... I really thought, um... What am I trying to say? What are, what are my words? So I was watching this one, and right as soon as they were like, oh, she's in love with Katsura, I was like, no. The joke is going to be that she's in love with Elizabeth. Like, I called it immediately. <laughs> but the way the episode played out, it actually convinced me that I was wrong before the reveal. <laughs> because when they're all on that rooftop, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, you know, maybe maybe a shitty old man really did make a difference. And he was like, ah, you know. And he's like all proud of himself. And it's like, it played out like the end of like a uh, emotional Gintama episode yeah. ending. And I was like, no fucking way that the joke to this is that it's not Elizabeth. There's no way <laughs> that, that, that it's not Elizabeth. It has to be. And then it ended, and I was like, no, you're fucking kidding me. And then it was Elizabeth the whole time. <laughs> it was, and then they do the classic, like, all right, so on three, boom, and then they do the, the pratfall. Yeah, and they're like, and we're going to fucking fall. <laughs> it's pretty good. So fucking funny. Mm-hmm. And this is also... I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a very simple premise. I actually didn't actually put it together because I was like... Maybe because it was in my mind, I was still thinking like... I had actually come to terms... I thought Elizabeth was a girl who just sounded like a man. <laughs> and then the when they did the whole dividing by um, men and women, I realized Elizabeth was on the man side. I was like, wait, is Elizabeth a man? And then finally this one it took is like, okay, yes, Elizabeth is a man. <laughs> I thought it was a girl yes. this entire time. <laughs> No, it's Elizabeth is a man. All right, <laughs> that makes sense. So for that specific reason, where I was like, I'm pretty sure Elizabeth is a woman, even though the, she <laughs> Elizabeth was shown to have a very deep voice and was voiced by a man. <laughs> I still took it as, oh, it's clearly a woman. <laughs> so it did throw me for a loop when I saw Elizabeth. But at the end, where I was like, oh, well, this wouldn't work out because I feel like they wouldn't do an entire episode. It wasn't until they said like, oh, she confessed. And I was like, mm, it's clearly not Katsura. Because Katsura had that whole thing with the the widow woman. And they wouldn't just throw that all away. And my, now at this point, I was going into my pro shipping brain. And I was like, no way, man. You are, you are in your headcanon. <laughs> yeah, the, the the part of Loki that reads uh, romantic comedies suddenly went like <laughs> mangas and horror mangas. was like, mm, no way, man. I'm not buying this bullshit. <laughs> doesn't believe. It doesn't make sense to me that it, it ended up being like, okay, yes, it was Elizabeth. <laughs> So, but yeah, I thought it was very well done. I really like the Hasegawa episodes because, like you said, he's the only character who gets consequences for his actions. I love uh, in the end when they're all getting their asses beat and they're all like screaming, except for him who's like weeping with joy and he's like, Yes, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Again, Hasegawa continuously uh, suffering the more we see him. <laughs> He's always in worse straits whenever we pop into him. It's really funny, now that you mention he does suffer consequences for actions. Like when Gintoki goes away and he ends up promoting the place that he was helping with Hasegawa. Hasegawa was like crying, he's like, oh, Gintoki, we were already fired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, it's just funny that like, Gintoki and everyone else, like... They just returned to the status quo after the episode. But after Hasegawa got fired, like, his life is just shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right for that. Every single time, they usually are able to go back to the house. There's not, like, a lot of worries, but Hasegawa is the exact opposite, where each each single episode that he has, his life gets a little bit worse. <laughs> And so, yeah, I really ended up enjoying this episode. I thought it was very nice. There were some cute moments here. I really liked Hasegawa really being focused. Because I thought originally it was going to be Hasegawa was focused, was interested in the girl. But he was like, no, not really. Which really kind of I liked because it actually kind of showed that maybe he still kind of cared about his wife, which we had 
been shown seen in like a really silly gag for a brief moment where he's still like talking to his wife and helping them out and stuff so i took it as like oh maybe he actually does legitimately still kind of care about um his wife in some manner and that's why he's like not specifically going for a woman so i thought that was nice um I liked it when everyone was eating those bananas. I don't know why. Maybe I'm a simple man. I see people eating bananas. I think it's funny. <laughs> I like uh, I like when she's like, thanks, banana old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's like, don't call me that. Shouldn't it be old man banana? <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. And then, yeah, the little bit here at the end with the invisible stuff. Uh, it really goes on for a while. <laughs> it really goes on for a while. But I like the reveal end of the director being like ah shit i forgot to turn that on and he just like clicks a button and he turns it on because i've also done that (laughs) where i i forgot to turn on a layer (laughs) and it kept everything invisible um uh i really like that gag where he's like no it's not just you it's literally everyone for some reason we're all invisible and the reveal at the end is like oh yeah let me just turn on that real layer real quick i thought it was good so this was a good episode here which i feel good to leave off of as we get into the next kind of five batch of them we started off in a bad place then but i think we yeah we we cleaned it up we cleaned yeah. it up toward the end this this last one was really the one before this was okay funny yeah the one before this was how funny the shitty one should have been it yes. was like just kind of filler funny nothing important and then this one was was very funny legitimately so. ba- yeah back on board here we yeah. go ready for the next episode really like the idea of of Shinpachi ever still being very trusting of Gintoki and saying like I believed you, I trusted you about that about those crabs. Yeah, he was like, "You told me." Yeah, exactly. And the funny thing is, I've had this exact conversation with my mom where I'll say it's expired, I shouldn't eat it, and she goes like, "No, no, no, you can still eat it." And I'm like, "It's expired." She's like, "No, but a couple days afterwards, it's still perfectly fine to eat for some things." And then I'll, like, look at her and go, like, I'll smell it. And I'm like, that's no way that that's eatable. She's like, you're overreacting. Eat the damn thing. <laughs> Didn't work out, did it? No, it never works out. <laughs> so, every time I'm like, all right, fine. But if I have some form of extreme diarrhea, we're going to have a problem after this. And then <laughs> I, you suffer the consequences of trying to prove a point. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think we're good and back on board. I'm glad to be talking about Gintama again with you, Zen been a while but i think we're back in it we're gonna try and a while yes it has been so we next week we're going to be hopefully talking about episodes 91 92 93 94 and 95 which is its own uh, separate arc which is the hasagawa prosecution arc so another two episode arc coming up all right hasagawa again yes (laughs) yay more hasagawa We're big fans of that, so join us hopefully next week as we talk more about Gintama. And of course, if you're interested in some other Shonen Jump stuff, you can always follow Zen on his channel, which he covers the actual manga bit of it, uh, over with Ocean Man. I <laughs> I was about to say Ocean is wrong again. <laughs> I remember the, the reveal we had last time we did it, where it's like, yes, I've been saying his... This episode where I blew your mind? Yeah, it's like, that's not how you say his name, and that it's been so long that I forgot. Now I know that that's not how you say his name, but I still can't help myself from saying Oceanus. <laughs> uh, the Ocean Man. Um, check out Zen. Always, He's always keeping up with Dave with that. Real good stuff. For more uh, other Shonen Jump stuff, obviously we also have Shonen Archives other episode where we're talking about Chainsaw Man, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and hopefully... Starting up soon, once we finish with the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, another new manga. Another new manga. Another new anime for us to talk about from other Shonen Jump stuff, as we also keep trying to get through Gintama and stuff like that. There will hopefully be more this year coming from us. And then, of course, if you just want regular-ass videos featuring me, you can follow my actual channel where um, I do Fago stuff, which is... a Fago is what allows me to do long-ass videos like this one. <laughs> <laughs> about fucking nothing yeah where it's just us having a good ass time about things that we like to talk about Fago <laughs> allows me to be able to do that with like 2,000 views on a video and i can go oh fuck yeah Fago's carrying me on this back end let's go <laughs> it allows us to do a little bit uh, more experimental stuff stuff that youtube actively dislikes if you try and do something different 
And you can always show support to the actual channel by leaving a like here and leaving a comment, which is always good. That helps the YouTube algorithm, and I doubt that helps much in my channel, but hey, whatever. I like reading people's comments, so leave whatever the hell you want. <laughs> and that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Until next time, we will see you guys in the next video. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. And peace out, everyone. Bye-bye. We don't actually have an ending bit here. It's alright, because <laughs> we have the ending song to play us out. <laughs>